Okay guys, in this lesson we're going to talk about basic bash scripting. Now bash scripting is very useful in an IT administrator or Linux administrator's uh, toolkit uh, because if you are familiar with executing commands, you know that you don't want to really waste time and type them over and over and over again. So if you have a certain set of commands that you need to do every single day or every couple hours or something, uh, it may be helpful to make a script for yourself, a bash script, and uh, use that over and over again by just issuing the script itself and not so much the commands and typing them out every single time. Now, Bash is a very simple language uh, in the basics of it, uh, but it is very powerful and it can do a lot of powerful functions and features. It's a very old programming language, uh, but still useful today in day, today's day and age, uh, although things like Python and Ruby and uh, all those languages are out and about and, and they're fairly simple as well. I still find myself using Bash to this day. So that being said, if with every programming language, your teacher usually teaches you your first script, how to create your first script, and that's your very simple Hello World script. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, and uh, hopefully you're following along here and you can create your first script. So simply I'm going to open it with VI, and you should be familiar with VI itself. So we're going to go ahead and, and VI a new file here, and we're going to call this hello.sh, and we're going to hit enter. And at this point here, I'm just going to go ahead and use the echo command. Now you can use, there's the echo command and the print uh, command, printf, uh, will output something to the screen, what you define to spit out to the screen or to repeat it or echo it to the screen. Now you can use either or, but I like using echo because I don't really see a huge difference between the two, uh, good or bad, so I just stick with what I know. So what I'm going to do here is type in echo, and then I want to use tack E because I want to create some new lines here to give it spacing. So I'm going to follow that with quotations. You have to have all of your regular text inside of quotations. So simply I'm going to type in hello world and end it with a quotation. And you can spit out new lines by using the forward slash n. So what we're going to do here is, I'm sorry, backslash n. And we're going to only spit out one new line after this to give it some spacing. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and write our changes to the file and quit the VI editor. Now if we went to ls in here, you can notice that the script is not really uh, an executable yet. So we have to use our change mod command, which you should be familiar with. We'll do 755 on this here, and then we'll specify the script to change. Now if we did lsl, you can now see that our um, permissions have changed so we can execute this file. So at this point here, to execute a bash script similar to Python scripts and other scripts, you type in the period forward slash file followed by the file name with no spaces. So in our case, it's hello.sh and hit enter. Now you can see it says hello world. Of course, what we defined earlier in the echo statement between the quotes, the quotes. And it spit out one new line after that. Now you can do multiple new lines if you had to by the following syntax, just using another for, or backslash n and certainly you can spit out as many as you'd like. So let's go ahead and talk about user input. So this may be helpful in a bash script to uh, have a user input some sort of information to make a decision and we'll go through if then else then statements later um, but to, to make a decision based upon the user's input. So uh, very simply we'll go ahead and edit our file again and at this point here I want to go ahead and I want to ask a user their name. So I'm going to simply type in echo and then E, tack E, and I'm going to ask, what is your name? Question mark, and I'm going to follow a new line here, end it with a quote. Now, this is basically just going to ask a question. It's not going to give the user any kind of way to input their information. So this is where the read command comes in. So simply we type in read and we want to know the name. So we can name this anything here. It could be your, it could be is, it could be whatever. Uh, but I'm going to use name just to follow along here. So read name and then I'm going to go ahead and echo their name. So we'll put quotes and then you. this is where a variable comes in here, which is a money sign or a dollar sign. And then followed by what the, uh, what it was from the read command. So in our case, name. And then we will go ahead and just echo that out and I will write and quit the changes so now if I go ahead and issue this script again you can see it asks says hello world what is your name and it's blinking asking us for our input so I'll type in Sean 
and then it echoes out Sean. So you can see that it actually used input. So let's go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now let's go ahead and VI our file again. Now let's talk about if then else statements. Now what that does is it looks for a condition and if that condition is true it then makes a decision based upon that or if it is false it makes another decision based upon that. So it's very simple to understand and I'll show you here step by step. So what I want to go ahead and do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and just delete my whole contents of my file here. Okay so what we're going to do here is add in Let's see here, we'll type in echo E and then we'll ask again, what is your name? Followed by a new line. And then we're going to go ahead and read name. And this point, we're going to do an if statement. So we want to see if their name equals something, do something. If it does not equal something, do something else. So I know it sounds confusing, but just bear with me here for one second. So simply it's if, and then we use a bracket, and we will do our name, and then the equals n. So now you have greater than, or equals than, if it doesn't equal, whatever, there's a bunch of different operators in here, uh, then it's really above the scope of this. But just to give you a basic idea of how this works, so we want to say if, if name equals, and we'll type in Sean, then we're going to close it out with a bracket, and we're going to end it with a semicolon. Then we want to issue something if that statement is true. So if name equals Sean, we want to do something then we need to put in then because we want to make a decision here. So if equals, if the name equals Sean exactly, then echo uh, and we'll follow this by a new line actually in fact and then we type in our else statement. So if the name does not equal Sean, we need to do something different. So else print or echo And anytime you want to exit out of an if then else statement, you have to exit with the if or the phi for finish, or basically think about it as if backwards. I know it's a little confusing. And at this point, we're ready to write our changes and quit the VI text editor. So now if we go ahead and issue the hello world uh, script and go ahead and fire it off, hit enter. What is your name? We'll type in Sean. It says, hello, Sean, access granted right? Uh, and that's it. It exits a script. We didn't define anything else for it to do. At this point, if we rerun it again and don't enter in the correct answer, we can just name this, you know, say my name is Tom. It says, your name is not Sean, access denied. So again, let's go look at the script here and walk through on what it's actually doing. So, so you can see here it asks a question. So what is your name? And it reads for your input here. So if what your input is, is exactly matching Sean, it's going to then echo, hello, Sean, access granted. Else, if it does not match Sean and you put in something different, it is going to issue the command, your name or echo, your name is not Sean, access denied, as we both saw uh, just then in that script. So now you can get pretty pretty interesting here with some of these uh, statements, if then else and else if. There's a bunch of different ways that you can go ahead and do this, but the point of this tutorial here, this lesson, is to give you a basic idea of how to start your own shell scripts and program in Bash in very basic terms. Uh, so I encourage you to look forward to our, our advanced Bash scripting class that will be coming out within a few months, and uh, everybody will get an email with that. 
So in this bonus footage, I want to show you how to actually use Bash to execute commands, because more than likely that's the whole reason why you're using Bash is to execute commands that are processed over and over again, but uh, again, without having to type them over and over again. So what we're going to do here is create a very basic pinger script. And what this function is going to do is ping what the user inputs. So let's go ahead and start a new file here. So we're going to do uh, vi pinger.sh. And in here, again, we're going to do our echo e. And I'm going to say here, uh, what would you like to ping? Followed by a new line. And then at this point, we're going to go ahead and say read. And we'll read uh, ping. And it could be anything again. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is issue the command ping. And then we're going to make it, uh, let's see, count. We're only going to do four. And then what we're going to do here is issue the variable. And in this case, it's going to be ping. And we will do that and write and quit our changes. And then, of course, we have to change mod 755 pinger.sh. And now we can go ahead and fire it. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in www.yahoo.com and hit enter. Now you can see it's pinging yahoo.com. It only pinged it four times because that's what we specified there. And it basically was done executing the script. So that's how you could accept user input or and or um, make commands based upon user input. Uh, factor that in with the is that if then else statements. Uh, and you can have yourself a, a fairly coherent script to be able to do multiple functions based upon certain users' input uh, and, and decision-making with those if-then-else statements. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this lesson again, and uh, thank you for staying tuned with us, and I will see you in the very next lesson.